Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, if anyone's watched my previous video and it was my Biba 1970s makeup haul, I had a bit of fun with that because I named it as possibly the oldest makeup haul on YouTube, but truthfully, it's quite a, it's not a big collection of makeup because there are people that have got huge collections of Biba, but it's a pretty good collection of original makeup. And it just so happens that on that video, I discovered that I think it was actually the same person that I bought it from is still selling some of the Biba 1970 stock. So because it was around about 10 years ago that I actually bought that haul, I decided it was time to buy a few more things. But as you can imagine, in those 10 years, it's became a little bit more valuable again. So obviously that's reflective in the prices. So I was very mindful and I just bought a few things that didn't add up to too much and that I could justify. Because until I win the lottery, I cannot justify buying half the stuff I would love to buy. Don't get me started on the Biba clothing because the 1970s vintage clothes are... The sizes probably aren't as generous as they are today. I wouldn't even attempt to buy the vintage clothes because I really don't know if they would fit or not because a 10 or a 12 in those days is far neater than a 10 or a 12 today. So who actually knows if you bought it, if you would just have to look at it adoringly because it wouldn't actually go over your hips. So that's still the dream. If I win the lottery, I'm going to do a Biba haul and I'm just going to buy everything that's on that website. But I thought you'd like to see what I got this time. So I will open it up and it's a little bit random, but it's mostly makeup. So we'll open this up. And we'll move these things over. So this is to add to my collection and I'll link you to the original video that's got a wider selection of makeup and skincare products. So these are all part of the unused bankrupt stock and it's estimated that this is from the when the store closed in 1975 so it was all unused brand new products that were destined to go into I think it's a Kensington store and then one thing led to another and the demise of Biba was pretty quick but if you know anything about Biba you'll know just how loved that store was. They did high fashion clothing, really popular, really wearable clothes, but they made them accessible. They had quite a quick turnaround. Um, I believe that the pricing was pretty accessible. It wasn't too expensive. Obviously there would have been different different levels of expense. You know, with designer brands, you can always buy into a brand at a certain point. So it would have been affordable for the most part. I'm sure there were items that would have been considered pretty expensive at the time. What I loved about the makeup department was that when you read the books and when you watch the documentaries, they actually were one of the first brands to just leave you to try on all the testers yourself. And they actually encouraged you to do your face up just there and then with the testers. Not the most hygienic by all means, but... I love the stories when people say that there'd be lots of girls getting ready before they were going in to start work at nine and they would just launch into Biba, do their faces up with all the testers and then march on on to work. So I think that's so funny. But what I've got here that I thought I'd talk you through is just a few things here that we would look at them today and probably be quite underwhelmed. But again, because they're historical items and because we can look back in time and compare them to now, I just absolutely love it. So the two things that aren't makeup are these two gift tags. So I don't have any Biba gift tags. I don't know if you can see here, though, that there's so much detail. It was really Art Deco, the Biba range. So hold them up and hopefully you can see them, but I'm not sure how the detail actually works here. But... The Art Deco 1920s style of Biba is just, it's so lovely. And again, there was a resurgence in the 70s, so it really does fit both the 20s and the 70s. But these are just two gift tags that I will never use, but I just love that they're just a little piece of history. So they've just got the little Biba logo and it just says to and from. And these will be stored away but again, it's just a piece of history. And I know it's bizarre. Um, comment if you agree. There's nothing more interesting to me than when you've got something from 
history and then when you smell it, it smells old and it's got that, it's just got that really vintagey, antique, just I love it. There's just something about knowing that you've got a piece of history in lovely condition just in your hands. I just love that. So this is a Biba mascara case and it's for your block mascara. So it says here, one mascara block, one mascara brush, but as you can see, or I can definitely feel it, it's empty. So let's just open it up. I'm being so careful here. So it's just an empty one. Now, as you can see, they don't even have the mirrors. Just back in those days, didn't really bother. Obviously, you would get compacts that did, but a lot of the time, it just did what you needed to do and nothing more. Nowadays, I think we do everything we can to add extra value to things. But your block mascara would have gone in here and you would have just used it as and when you needed to just touch up your mascara during the day. So I like that. That's something a bit different. Mini brushes, and they've all got, again, the little Biba logo on them. So these would most likely be your little eyeshadow brushes. And I really don't think in today's world we use anything like this. You still do get your little miniature brushes that might come with your compacts. But we just seem so evolved now in how we apply our makeup that you just wouldn't consider it. But I certainly remember even in the 90s when I started going out when you were in your late teens, people would just say, I've bought myself a new eyeshadow compact and they wouldn't even consider getting a brush set. They would just use the brushes that came with it. So this seems to me dated but also not that long ago that you would just use these but as we all know they're not very effective but again I just love that it's a piece of modern history that again will not be opened but will be kept for a long time by me. I just love the fact that these are from the 70s and they're completely unopened. I love that. In my previous haul I've got some of these brushes too. So these are doublers. But again, they've all got the little Biba logo on them. And again, these are just reminiscent to me of modern times where we are so evolved now in all the brushes that we use and when we apply them and the fact that we've got buffing brushes and blending brushes and angled brushes. And yet it wasn't that long ago where it was truly the professionals that had those brushes and the rest of us just said that's my eyeshadow brush that's my blending brush and even if you look here this is technically a pointed tip brush and it's actually not too bad it's got it's quite well it's not unsuitable for what you'd want it to do if you were doing some lining but I don't think you'd get a brilliant result with it. So it's not the worst, but in today's times, it wouldn't really stack up. It doesn't have the precision. It doesn't have the form to it. But in those days, you would just put up with it. You'd probably be quite happy with it. And again, I think this is like a little lip brush. And again, it's um nothing wrong with it, but you just... You probably expect more from your brushes in today's world, but that's why I love it. I just love, it shows me evolution. And these are so reminiscent again of when you used to get little makeup sets and you would get the foam applicators and they were all right, but not amazing, but you just used them. And now we've just evolved so much that if you got this now, you'd be like, huh? What'll I do with that? But again, I love it. Just a little throwback in time. And then here we have got our pencils. So we've got a top and tail toffee cream pencil, which I think is this. Yep, top and tail toffee cream, and it's an eyebrow pencil and brush. So if we have a little look here, it's still got the Biba. And I'm just going to read here, made in Germany. Biba London W1. So that's your little eyebrow brush. And that is quite firm, actually. Little bristles, that's really firm. 
quite impressed with that, if you can see that. And then that is the eyebrow pencil. And considering that it says it's toffee cream, that's actually quite a nice soft brown. Quite a greyish brown. And I always do the smell. Yeah, that it smells like crayons. And I think, again, I suppose you could use this, but I don't know if it would be safe to do so because of the age of it. But again, there's something about the vintage makeup that's got that smell. It does smell old. I know that's obvious, but it's just so reminiscent. I love it. And then we've got another top and tail. And this is Mulberry. And this is a lip pencil and brush. And the same again, Biba London, made in Germany. So lip brush. So we've got our little lip brush there. And again, these are pretty standard, but it just doesn't have the precision that we expect now. There's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't have that form and precision that we're used to now. And then if we have a look here, that's our mulberry colour. So it's quite a nice, it is quite a, a purpley colour, obviously, with mulberry. You can see that's quite purpley. And if you look at the Biba collections and historically, they loved using unusual colours. So they would use blues, they would use purples, they would use vibrant greens. They were always trying to break you out of the standard. This is what we use in the lips. We use pinks, we use reds. They would always try and do something a bit different. So you can imagine Mulberry at the time would have been pushing the boundaries. And then finally, we have got the gold ingot pencil, the coal pencil. And again, Biba London, made in Germany. And it's got the lovely Biba embossed logo. So the coal pencil, that's quite a nice gold there. And they've held their own. They've aged really nicely. But again, I won't be trying them out because I really do want to keep them unused. But you can see there, it's quite a nice goldy colour. It's quite soft. It's not metallic -y. It's quite a gentle gold, more brownie gold. But that is the final treat in the mini Biba haul. So I hope you found that video interesting. I absolutely love vintage makeup, but it does seem to be Biba for me. That's the one that I'm really drawn to. Um, if you've got anything that you collect, if, whether it be vintage makeup or any collections at all, I love to know because it's always interesting to me when somebody just develops a hobby or an interest in something and then they develop a collection. So I hope you found that interesting. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon.